Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we will solve J advanced previous year questions from the chapter work power energy. So this is problem number one. So we have a particle of mass m that is initially at rest at the origin and it is subjected to a force and it starts moving along the x axis which would mean that the force is along the x axis only. Its kinetic energy k changes with time as dk by dt equals gamma t where gamma is a positive constant. So they, they are asking which of the following statements are true. The rate of change of kinetic energy is gamma t. k we know it's half mv squared so I can take the m by 2 out of the derivative and this would come out to be v multiplied by dv by dt and this equals gamma t. So now we can separate the variables so we'll get m dv equals gamma t dt. So after integrating initially the particle was at rest. So from here you can see that the so we'll get the velocity as some constant k times t. So the speed of the particle is proportional to time. Option B is therefore correct. Now they're asking about the force in option A. Now m dv by dt is going to be the force f acting on the body. So I can say f equals gamma t divided by the velocity which is kt and this comes out to be another constant. So option A is also correct. Now in option C they're asking about the distance. The distance of the particle from the origin increases linearly with time. This would be wrong because uh, we can clearly see the velocity is linearly varying with time. So if I if you write the velocity as ds by dt, you can clearly see it is varying parabolically with time. So option C will be wrong. Now option D, they are asking if the force is conservative or not. So the force will be conservative and let's try to understand why. Let's say we have two points A and B. So these points are separated by a distance, let's say x. It doesn't matter which path you take this particle along. The work done by the force f, now the force f is always constant and, and it's along the x-axis, right? So let's say, so the work done by this force f along this path will be the force multiplied by the displacement in the direction of force. So that will always be f multiplied by the distance ab. So irrespective of the path taken, the work is coming out to be the same along all the paths connecting point a and point b, which means f is a conservative force and option d will also be correct. So moving on to the next problem, we have a bob of mass m that is suspended by string of length l1. It is given a minimum velocity required to complete a full circle in the vertical plane. At the highest point, it collides elastically with another bob of mass small m suspended by a length, suspended by a string of length l2, which is initially at rest. Both the strings are massless and inextensible. If the second bob after collision acquires the minimum speed, required to complete a full circle in the vertical plane, the ratio L1 by L2 is. So if we have a particle that is suspended uh, with the help of a light inextensible thread, so the minimum velocity for which the particle completes the circle is square root of 5g L. Let's try to derive this. So let's say the velocity that is required at the bottom is V only. If we want to make sure that the particle completes the vertical circle, then at the topmost point, the tension in this string has to be finite. So the radially inward forces on the ball is the tension T plus its weight mg. So we can say T plus mg provides the required centripetal acceleration, which is m v dash square divided by L. And we have to make sure that this tension is some finite quantity. So v dash at the topmost point must be greater than square root gl. So now we can conserve energy between this point and this point. We can say v square equal to v dash square uh, 2 into 2 gl which will be 4 gl. So from here we'll get the value of v as square root of 5 gl. So we'll use this result in our problem. So in the current problem, so it was given that this bob of mass m was suspended uh, by a string of length l1 and it was given that the, at the highest point uh, of its circular motion, it collides with another bob of the same mass which was suspended uh, by a string of length L2. And it was also given that after this particular collision between these two bobs, this bob over here acquires the minimum velocity to complete a circle. This bob is given the minimum velocity to complete a vertical circle. So if we say this velocity was let's say V1, then V1 using the previous result is going to be square root 5g L1. And at the topmost point, as we discussed in the previous page, the velocity of this bob is square root g l1 in the leftward direction. So this is what's going to happen before collision. And after collision, this other bob of mass m 
must gain a velocity of square root of 5g l2 because only then this bob will be able to complete a vertical circle and let's say the velocity of the other bob is some small v so now as the collision is given to be elastic we can say the separation velocity of the two masses equals the approach velocity of the two masses so the separation velocity from here we can see it is root 5g l2 minus v and the approach velocity is simply root g l1 and we can also conserve momentum um, before and after collision so we can say m root g l1 equals m root 5g l2 plus mv so now if i subtract uh, e equation 1 and equation 2 we get v equals 0 which means this bob of mass m comes to rest after collision you could have also uh, i mean if you guys remember the result that let's say if we have a mass m and if you have and it's moving at the velocity v and it collides elastically with another mass m then the velocities get exchanged i mean if you know the result if you if you knew that result you can use that as well so from here we can say that square root gl1 equals square root of 5 gl2 and in the given problem they ask the value of l1 by l2 which would be 5. moving on to the next problem we have an elliptically shaped rail pq in the vertical plane with op and a block of mass m is pulled along the rail from point p to point q uh, always parallel to the elliptical surface so there are no there is no friction in the given problem and the kinetic energy of the block and we have to find out the kinetic energy of the block when it reaches the point q okay and uh, the force that pulls this block is given to be 18 newton and it's a constant force it is always along the line pq so from here we can say the work done by force f on the block is going to be the force which is 18 multiplied by the displacement of the block in the direction of the force f so in the direction of the force f the displacement of the block is pq and pq from this right triangle is going to be 5 so the work done by the force f is 90 joules now the other force that is acting on the block is the mg force the normal force won't do any work so now we can use the work energy theorem that states that the work done by mg plus the work done by force plus the work done by the force f equals a change in kinetic energy which is basically the kinetic energy at point q and that is what they have asked in the problem so from here now work done by mg so the uh, mg is acting vertically downwards and the displacement in the uh, is in the upward direction so the work done by mg is going to be negative okay and the magnitude of the work will be mg which is 1 into 10 times the vertical displacement which is 4 and the work done by force f is 90 joules so the kinetic energy of the block at point q comes out to be 50 joules so the answer for n will be 5. So that's it for this video guys. I'll bring more PYQs in the upcoming videos. And make sure you like and subscribe in order to get the notification for those videos. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.